welcome to today's video. I've got the uh, battery management system, BMS, hooked up here with my crude serial cable that runs underneath the battery pack. <laughs> Comes over here to the old DMOC adapter, which is hooked up uh, cut to a couple uh, 5 volt tolerant I.O. lines. And then I've got the uh, ICD3 hooked up to it in debug mode, so I can read out the uh, memory. And uh, the reason I got that is to get the serial data into my micro so I can ship it over um, the Wi-Fi link and then we can start decoding it uh, so we can look at it real time. The logic is nice but it doesn't let you look at stuff real time. It lets you analyze things but um, one of the interesting things I ran into with the UART is this framing error here uh, messes up the uh, UART on my micro. It uh, I have to go in there and clear that interrupt and then I've got this weird it expects there to be some data here and then it gets off and so it's starts taking in the bytes as if they're you know not they're off they're not lined up with it so I had to do a little work to get that uh, actually functioning so I've enlisted the help of the uh, an interrupt line and a couple of timers um, so on this falling edge here I interrupt and start two timers um, I, I turn off the, the falling edge interrupt actually and then I start a timer which then expires over here generates an interrupt and then turns on the UART so it can catch this first start bit and then the second timer expires and then generates an interrupt out here once uh, all the data has been received and that turns my interrupt line back on so that when I come over to the next one here I do the same thing I interrupt I essentially delay and then I turn on my UART and then I get all the data, date, all the data in and that, that works perfectly fine. So it was just a little bit of trial and error until I got that figured out but um, I guess I can show you here the, the code that does that. <clears throat> For those that are interested, I set my, uh, these are my, uh, the two receive lines, I just set them to in, uh, in bits and enable the uh, open drains that allows it to do 5 volt tolerant I.O. And uh, this micro, it's the DSPIC 33E series, has a peripheral pin select, so I unlocked, unlocked the peripheral pin select so I can map uh, UART4 uh, receive to um, RP101, which happens to be the pin that I'm hooked up to. And then I also take uh, interrupt number 4 and map that also to RP101. So the RP is this remappable pin. And then I lock it because you don't want to accidentally change these on the fly. So you have to do this unlock sequence and then a lock sequence. After that I set up the UART, it's just uh, 8N1 and um, turn off auto baud and we set the baud rate to 9200 and we interrupt after every uh, character is received and then we um, disable the transmit because we don't want to actually transmit so we go ahead and turn that off. Uh, we're just uh, sniffing at this point. Now I do have my other pin that's commented out here, I could make that into a transmit and then when I remove the micro I can go and or cut the trace and then I can simulate being the master this way. I also set up my um, uh, UART uh, interrupt flag, I clear it and then I enable the interrupts for it. Uh, I don't enable the UART, we leave it off for now. And then uh, set up timer 5, this is my start delay, that was uh, once that interrupt occurs it goes and runs for 0.8 milliseconds, so I've got that set up. Do the same thing, clear the interrupt and then enable it. Enable the interrupt routine. And then we go ahead and we don't start it, so it's commented out. Same with timer 6, which is used to stop. I set that up for 10 milliseconds. The longest packet's like 9.8 milliseconds, so it works out really well. And then uh, we don't start timer 6, and then we go ahead and set the uh, interrupt uh, pin number 4. We set that to interrupt on the negative, on the falling edge, and then we clear its flag, and we do enable that guy's interrupt, so that's running. And this is the interrupt routine. It's pretty simple. On uh, the falling edge, we come in here and we reset number, uh, re uh, disable ourselves, so we won't interrupt again. We go ahead and turn on, oh, reset timer five, start timer five, and then we go ahead and clear our interrupt flag. Otherwise, we come back in here again. And then timer 5, when it expires, we go ahead and we clear, I reset the baud on uh, UART number 4, and that 
clears its counter, so that just makes it so it doesn't, if it had some garbage in there, that resets it. And then I go ahead and turn it on. And then I kill timer 5, which is what we're in, so we don't, that doesn't interrupt anymore. So go ahead and turn it off. And we reset timer 6 and start timer 6. And then, uh, so meanwhile, while we're sitting here and timer 6 is running, we're receiving all of our data. And then when timer 6 goes, it goes and interrupts, we go ahead and disable the UART. And then we kill timer 6 so we don't interrupt anymore. And we go ahead and clear our flag. And uh, we, uh, we clear um, interrupt 4, and then we turn it back on. So we're ready to catch the negative, or that falling edge again to start uh, the whole process over again. And then on uh, receive interrupt, we go ahead and just grab our data. We look for... Um, we clear out any errors we might have, framing errors, and then uh, we go grab our data and we're looking for 55. Once we hit the first 55, because there's some garbage in there, we hit 55. Set the first that we found the first word, and then we go ahead and fill out our. Uh, well, it's not really a data structure, it's just um, a big byte array right here. Uh, how big is it? <clears throat> I lost my mouse. There it goes 476 bytes. 477 because it starts at zero and then if we go ahead and run this I think we're ready go ahead and everything's running and you can see all my data is all zero so as soon as I pause it debugger will go across and grab some data out of it and you can see it just populated everything and if I go grab my capture here. This is what we recorded a long time ago. You can see that it's 55A1 oops, let me get you on the screen here. 55A1 D1 uh, 4F BF 46 35 and if you look at my data it's 55 1A D2 4F BF 46 35 so everything lines up. Uh, the first data starts at first cell data is 55C1 F2 and then you know bunch of data and we can look over here let me see if I can find it 55 uh, there it is 55 C1 F2 0 0 0 0 85 15 blah 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 so we've got all of the cell data in there and uh, so I went ahead and populated this entire array so it looks like uh, definitely have it in there and I just gotta write some code to ship this over to uh, the uh, web interface and then uh, we'll be able to uh, go ahead and uh, start decoding it from there. Anyways, uh, supposedly a quick video. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.